Welcome to iLecture Online. Our second example of how to use the method of undetermined coefficients involves a function that is a polynomial. This is what makes this a non-homogeneous differential equation. Again, the solution will be the sum of the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. First, let's find the homogeneous solution by turning this into a homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation will look as follows. y double prime minus 5y prime plus 4y equal to 0. And now we solve that using the characteristic equation. And so we get r squared minus 5r plus 4 equals 0. You notice that I used the same homogeneous part as I did in the previous example, just so we can quickly run through that and concentrate on how to do the particular part of the solution. So again, this can be factored. r minus 4 times r minus 1 is equal to 0, which means the two roots are r1, which is 4, and the second root r2, which is equal to 1. And so the homogeneous part of the solution is going to look as follows. c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the t. So there's the homogeneous part of the solution, just like we did on the previous video. Now, how do we find the particular solution? Well, we know here that g of t is a polynomial. So we know that it must look like this in the general format. And therefore, we're going to rewrite this with unknown coefficients a, b, and c. And so we can then say that the particular solution must have the form as follows a t squared plus b t plus c. And what we have to do here is determine what those particular coefficients are. To do that, we're going to take the first and second derivative of this and plug it back into the original equation and set it equal to the right side to find those coefficients. So let's go ahead and do that. When we find the first derivative that is equal to 2a times t plus b, and the second derivative is going to be equal to simply 2a. We plug those back into the original equation. We come over here, and y double prime is equal to 2a minus 5 times y prime, and y prime is right here. That would be 2at plus b. And then we have plus 4 times y, plus 4 times y, which is right here, at squared plus bt plus c. And that should equal the right side equation, which is 4t squared plus 4t minus 5. So what we're going to do with the left side is we're going to group it together as a coefficient times t squared, a coefficient times t, and then just a number by itself. Notice we have only one t squared term right here. So we can pull it out and we can write this as 4a times t squared. Let me put this in brackets. Plus, what else do we have? Well, we have a t term right here. It's minus 10a times t, so minus 10a. We have another t term right here that's 4 times this. That would be plus 4b. And that's it. That's the only t terms that we have. And so that's times t. And then finally, we have just a constant comprised of the remainder. So we have a 2a right here, a minus 5 times b, which is minus 5b. And over here we have a 4 times c, so plus 4 times c. And that equals the right side of the equation, 4t squared plus 4t minus 5. That means that this right here, 4a, must equal 4 minus 10a plus 4b must equal 4, and 2a minus 5b plus 4c must equal negative 5. So we take it one step at a time. We can first solve for a using the first comparison. So we can say that 4a is equal to 4, which means a is equal to 1. So now that we know what a is, we can plug that value in here. So we can say that minus 10 times a, which is 1 from the first equation here, plus 4b is equal to this coefficient, 4. So minus 10, move the other side, that becomes 
plus 14, so we end up with 4b is equal to 4 plus 10, or 14. That means b is equal to 14 divided by 4, which is 7 divided by 2. So now we have our second coefficient, and now we're looking for the third coefficient, c. So we can plug values for a and b in here. So we have 2 times 1 minus 5 times b, which is 7 over 2, plus 4 times c, and that has to equal negative 5. So that allows us to figure out what c is equal to. All right, we can move the 2 to the other side and multiply this through, so we get minus 35 over 2. Matter of fact, you know what? It's probably better to get rid of the fraction by multiplying everything by 2. So let's do that. So when we do that, we get 4 minus 35 plus 8c is equal to negative 10. That just makes it a lot cleaner to work with that. So moving the negative 35 across, that becomes plus 35 minus 10 is plus 25. Moving 4 across, that would be plus 21. So we have 8c is equal to 21, which means that c is equal to 21 divided by 8. And there's our third unknown or undetermined coefficient, which now we have determined. Which means that the particular solution cannot be written as follows. a is equal to 1, so we have t squared, b is 7 over 2, so plus 7 over 2 times t, and c is 21 over 8, 21 over 8, and that means that our full solution, y is a function of time, is equal to the homogeneous part, which we found right here, which is c1, e to the 4t, plus c2, e to the t, plus the particular solution, which we have over here, so plus t squared, plus 7 over 2t, and plus 21 over 8. And now we have the complete solution to our original differential equation. So again, you see that this method is fairly nice, very straightforward. It requires us to do is solve a, linear, a set of linear equations, in this case for the three undetermined coefficients. That's how we do that.